I have got a really, really cool video for you today. I've got my brother here, Josh, who I'm going to be interviewing on his Fiverr journey. So I don't know if you remember, but a couple of weeks ago, I made a video on Fiverr, maybe last week. I made a video on Fiverr about how you can earn about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month on Fiverr and that video was based on this person's success. So I've actually brought him in here. I've got a list of questions I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him exactly how he did it, what Fiverr jobs are working best for him and how much he's actually earning and how he's not earning $5 per job on Fiverr, but he's actually earning between $270 and $500. And we've got his screenshot. We've got his, his screen here. We're recording actually. the screen. That's the one we're recording the screen so we can actually show you. But before we get started with this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Where is it? It's like somewhere over Bang! there. Somewhere over there. <laughs> it's always on that side. I think. Uh, and on this side. I've got, I'm, I'm so close to 7,000 subscribers and the majority of people who view my videos aren't already subscribed. So be one of those people and subscribe. No, don't be one of those people who, who aren't subscribed. What? Don't be one of the people who aren't subscribed. Just make sure you subscribe. subscribe. And they're gonna get started with this right now. Okay, so firstly, I'm gonna ask you the first question. This is my first ever interview. Wow, I know. You've never interviewed me before. I've never interviewed anyone before. I should interview you. You can interview me interviewing you. How does it feel to do your first interview? <laughs> okay, <laughs> how long have you been doing Fiverr? So, I, uh, I did Fiverr a long time ago. Was it four years ago? Before yeah. we started Amazon? I did Fiverr as a side thing. And that was when Fiverr was still doing $5 gigs, when they were just $5. I remember doing those as well. They were rubbish. So I was doing a thousand words, because I do writing, because one of my specialities We're gonna is, get to that We'll soon. get to that. You wanna focus on your speciality, but, so I did a thousand words for $5. And, and Fiverr take 20%. So it was a thousand words for $4. <laughs> it's literally oh less than like minimum wage in any country. So it, that didn't work for me. So recently, um, I came- well, how long, when did you come back? So I came back to Fiverr January of this year. I wanted to start a few side hustles and I enjoy writing. So I wanted to get back into writing, but I was not going to be doing $5 gigs anymore. So um, I did a little bit differently this time. I charged way higher. I have a payment scheme where- We'll get um, to that as well. We'll get to that. But that, that's when I, I got okay. back into it last so, month. Fine. Brilliant. So you've been on Fiverr. Let's just say we're gonna we're, we're gonna forget the past and we're gonna say you've, you've recreated your Fiverr journey 100%. in the last let's say month and a bit. Yeah. Um, and you've approached it very differently. Yeah. So let me ask you, what gigs do you do? Like how many gigs do you have? But actually, before that, and for, for you guys, what is a Fiverr gig? Uh, a Fiverr gig is a job that you will do. A gig, a job. It's the same thing. Um, where you promise a you, you promise a deliverable like a graphic or an article or a photograph or whatever it is, and then they pay you Fiverr. They pay you the the person who's purchasing the gig pays you um, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you can charge. Fiverr allow you to charge up to a thousand dollars now. It's ridiculous. Um, and then Fiverr hold on to the money. Uh, they keep it in an escrow account. And then you deliver the gig, so you deliver the articles, and after a few days, they release it to you. Is it just articles? It's not just articles, it's anything. It's photographs, articles. You can hold up a sign for someone in a certain location, and they will pay you for that. Go on Fiverr and look through the um, buying section. You can buy anything. Graphic design, social media marketing, um, writing work, photography work, digital work. It's basically work. like a freelance website. Yeah, I mean, if we should we just go into the buying section and and they'll be able to see how many things that are uh, you can actually do. Yeah, go on. Okay, so I'm going to go into the buying, and okay, so logo animation, writing and translation. You could do social media copy, technical writing. I love the writing section because I'm good at writing. If you do programming or anything, you could do chatbots, game development, mobile apps. If you do anything business, you could do data entry. Anyone could do data entry. It's just putting in data. Virtual assistant, that's easy. Business tips. You just give someone business <laughs> tips. What is that? I'm probably going to make a five gig for business tips. Yeah, one of product, my business yeah. Nice. Product research is easy. You just research products for people. You could do graphic and design. There's a whole section on there. From okay. architecture to book design so to everything. Everything. We understand what a gig is. Right. What okay. are your five gigs? Very How good many interview you skill to stop me when I'm blabbering. Thank you. Congratulations. How does it feel to be developing your interview skills? I mean, we... <laughs> what, what, tell, tell us your Fiverr gigs so, and how many do you actually have? So I have three Fiverr gig, uh, four Fiverr gigs at the moment. 
we can just go into it and I'm happy to share all of my information. So these are my gigs. Write original SEO friendly engaging content to grow your business. That's the main gig, right? So it's a writing gig. Um, so articles, articles, content, everything. And um, I've set up the pricing in a way that leads people to message me. And I'll, I'll talk about that strategy in a okay. minute because that's more important. But I primarily work through just one gig at the moment. And my other gigs are strategic. Okay, and so that, I'll explain that in a little bit. Yeah, so that leads me to the next question, which is going to be, what is your most popular gig? What are you doing? Right, so my most popular gig is the writing gig. And do you have any qualifications or university degrees telling you you can write? I got a B in A level in high school. What? So do you see what I'm saying here? And, and I mean, I know you're 30, <laughs> but is there any restriction? Could you be 14 and doing that exact gig? Yeah, nobody knows how old I am on Fiverr. You could be any age, um, no qualifications, um, yeah, you can be anyone doing so anything. So your, your most popular gig is just a writing gig? Just writing, yeah. Okay, and right, so... And I've broken it down into a science as well. So if you wanted to do a writing gig, it's actually something that is quite doable. And I'll, I'm happy to share my strategy with that. Should I? Yeah, go on. Okay, so my strategy for the writing gig is what, what I do, I tell them to give me a topic and tell them to give me as many competitors and, and examples of work that they want. And what I do is I then go into those, I then research those examples, I spend 10 minutes, take all those examples, open them up in tabs, and I find, let's say they've paid for 300 words. So I find pieces of information from all over the internet, and I copy this piece, and I put it in, I copy this piece, and I put it in, I copy this piece, and I put it in, all into a text file, and then I go onto wordcounter.com, and I make sure that I've got 300 words of researched words. Then I go into a tool called Pro Writing Aid, which I've opened up on the screen here. And what this tool does is you can put, you can put your work into it um, and then you can check your style, you can check your grammar, and it basically tells you if there's passive verbs and active verbs and all these things that I don't know what they are. And it checks the grammar and everything. I don't know what any but of this not, is. But you're, you're, you're rewriting the so, research? Yeah, or? so I, I put that research and then I rewrite it in my own words and then I put it into this pro writing tool and that's it. Then I edit it and I make sure I get a score of like above 75 or 80 uh, in the summary. And then it's, it's a good enough piece. And if you have basic English uh, writing skills, um, then, nice. then you're great. You don't need to have a PhD. You don't need to pass. You don't need to be in university or anything like that. Okay, so tell us the juicy part. Tell us the earnings that you've got since restarting in January. So how much have you been able to make since restarting your Fiverr again in January? And then we'll break down how you've earned that amount. So juicy, I've earned 720 pounds in February. And in January, I had just, I started at the end of January here. So I had earned a hundred and 200, no wait, 50 plus a hundred, two, 300 pounds in January when I just started late January. And then February, I, I earned uh, 720 pounds. But if we go into- uh, Yeah, because there's outstanding, isn't there, of gigs that you've done. Yes, so let's go into that, if I can find it. Okay, earnings, I'm just gonna click it. Yeah, I don't know why you didn't just click it in the first place. <laughs> so, as you can see, I've got available for withdrawal 660, pending is 380, so that's going through the escrow system in Fiverr, it's not been released yet, you can see here, it's pending clearance, so I have jobs of $120, $40, $70 being, waiting for clearance. And then over here, expected earnings is 724, and that means the gigs that I haven't even started on yet. So I have a $500 gig, a $270 gig. Um, and so what's the total there? The total there is nearly $1,700. Yeah. That's amazing, and that is for how, that is- That's for February. $1,700 just in February. Yeah, so that's, tw that's 20 days of February. So this is, I mean, I've been doing this on the side. I have an Amazon business, we have Azon University, I have local business clients. Why are this, you doing this if we're making money with other things? Just another- I just like, income? yeah, you know, I, I, you know, if you, if you watch Gary V, he goes um, and he does, you've seen Gary V's trash talk, right? Yeah, yeah. So he goes and he, he finds stuff in, in um, yard sales and he resells them on eBay and he's a multi-millionaire and he says he does this just because he's in, he enjoys it. So I thought, why am I doing more 
side hustles that I enjoy, and I love writing. It's it's such a fun you, passion you were doing to me. It anyway, you were just doing hypnotic writing. I was do, I do hypnotic writing, which is like meditative writing. I do writing for our business. I do write all our emails, all our copy, our articles. I write on Quora. I write on my blog. So I just love writing, and I just thought, why not make it a side hustle? And I seem to be earning good amount of money for it. This pays for my rent and my food and my living, and everything else is profit. So. Yeah, nice. it's, no, like it's good fun. Yeah, that's cool. Fine. So you you said that you charged five hundred dollars and two hundred seventy dollars for jobs. Yeah. Lead me through your funnel that 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 starts at five dollars and somehow gets to five hundred dollars. Like, <laughs> so what you say that they message you and yeah, okay. So it's a really sneaky strategy and it's a pricing strategy. Um, so what I do is on Fiverr you can have three tiers of pricing, right? Right. So you can have a basic, a standard, and a premium package. So what I do is I make the basic package something really horrible that nobody wants to order. So I only offer 300 words, which is like a, par a few paragraphs. It takes me five seconds to do. I do that for $10 and I say, this is basic fluff piece content used for average blogs. And I just make it look really bad. The next one is um, 500 is 500 words. So this is, uh, you've got basic and then what's after basic? Basic and standard. So then standard, standard is 500 words and that's 40 five dollars right so it's a huge jump from the ten dollars so i almost want people to look at that and be like oh i want a good job but i don't want to pay that much and then i have the premium which is a thousand words at only sixty dollars so i've just put it up a little bit so what you get with that is people see the sixty dollars a premium and they're like oh the standard looks a lot better now but i don't want to go for the cheap crappy option um but what really happens a lot is that people message me they message me saying, hey, your stuff looks great because they can see that I'm offering premium is it pricing. Your pricing is so confusing. My, price, my pricing is so, is very premium and, and, the, and the cheap stuff is so crap. Um, so people who want real quality, they yeah. message me first. Okay, so and what happens when they message me is they go into my sales ninja strategies, which <laughs> I then pretty much, I say, I go through the sales process, which nowadays the good sales process is asking a lot of questions, finding out their business. So I say, oh great, you want some content? Great, well you, you can see I offer premium pricing. Uh, please tell me what sort of content you want, what your, what your website is, what your competitors are. And I get them to tell me what they're looking for. Then I go through their website and I see what I think they could do, like what piece of content would work. And I go and look at some top uh, articles on Google. And then I come back and I message them with loads of excitement saying, wow, I have some great opportunities for you. Here's some articles that you could do. Um, I, I can I, I recommend a premium service where I do articles. Of course art you recommend the premium service. I recommend the premium service because your website is so high value and, and so, such good quality that you want the best quality for your audience. You can see I'm doing the salesy things. And many of them disagree. Many of them are just like, sorry, we can't afford it. And I'm like, great. And then many of them say, okay, great. Where, could, where how can I start? And this is where I really get them. So, and this is really, really good for them. And it's good for me as well. Yeah, so you're not, you're not, you're not like, you're not like tricking anyone. I'm yeah. actually providing high value. So what I do is I, I, when you're in the messaging, you can create a custom offer, right? You can't do this in your gig. So when I create a custom offer, I offer in bulk. So what I do is I say, I think you should go for five premium articles and I'll offer you one for free. So then I offer them five premium articles, which is $60 times five, $300. $300. And then I offer them a discount, which is, you know, I offer them a discount of 50 bucks. So I'm sending them a custom offer of $250. I don't send the custom offer yet. Um, because it's very, when you, you send a custom- You entice them first. You entice them first. When you send a custom Smart. offer in Fiverr, it, it's a big, custom offer with a pricing. And I really dislike how Fiverr has set that up. So first I discuss the price. I say, hey, I can I can do the bulk order for you. It's $270 and you get a free article. I always end the sentence with free article or discount. So they know they're getting value. And then they say, um, and then they either say, no, it's too expensive. And I say, okay, thank you. What else would you, might you be looking for? Or I ask them, what is their budget? Maybe I meet them in the middle if I find it's okay for me. Did you and recently charge someone? What, was, what did you recently charge someone? For 100 grand. 100 grand. <laughs> so I went a bit overboard. Someone asked me to write a book for them. So I charged them um, a very uh, expensive uh, freelance writer, as if I was a professional freelance writer who had written for celebrities. I charged 100 grand for a book. 
and they it's came to say that they did not go through with the deal. Well, they said that other people are doing it for five hundred dollars a chapter. So I said, okay, I'll match that. I'll do five hundred dollars for the first chapter. But because you love my work, you're, because you're going to love my work so much, I want a grand for every chapter after that. And they agreed to that. So now I'm writing out the first chapter. Um, did they do a grand? I didn't know that. Yeah. So I said because if it's good value, then I want you to get rid of all the other writers and pay me more. So I still want to be paid. So back to the back to the the payment. So you you offer them the thing, you offer them a discount, you get them to agree first, and you say, okay, I can send you a custom offer. Is that okay? And then get them to agree to the custom offer because that's going to get you a very high conversion rate on the custom offer. And then this is the trick: you send a custom offer with the two hundred and seventy dollars or whatever you're charging, and then the the delivery date is where you get your values, right? Because the delivery date in your gig is three to five days or seven days or whatever you set up. But in a custom offer, you can put it at 14 days, at 20 days, and they don't even bat an eyelid. They don't even know because they just look at the price, they've agreed to a custom offer, they accept. Oh, so do you not, do you not discuss the, the time it you takes? Don't, you don't discuss the time it takes. Sometimes if they discuss the time it takes, like with this chapter uh, for this book for $500, um, we discussed the time, 14 days wasn't good enough, they they cancelled my custom offer because 14 days wasn't good, and I ended up saying I'll just do it in three days, and I just bang it out. Um, but most people, they don't ask about the 14 days, they just accept it. So sometimes I have a writing job that I have 14 days to get to, so I, I can twiddle my thumbs. For, what happens for... if you don't get to it in 14 days? You get a bad review? Oh, so if you miss your, yeah. your due date? So I've done this a few times, due date. Uh, that's what they call it, they call it a due date. So. There's a few things that happens when you miss your due date. Uh, there's ways to get around it. You don't really want to be in a position where your account is flagged for late delivery because you get less sales. They show you up less on the, on the home pages. So there's a few ways to get around this. What you can do is you can wait until you get a late delivery and then you create, and then there's a, an offer on the side um, where it says uh, send, send a complaint or something. Uh, it's right on the side, it's a green button, it says complain or submit a complaint or something like that. So you click that and you can request an extended delivery date. And you request an extended delivery date and then you have four days for them to respond. So you're giving yourself time and usually they're okay. What you do is with the with the request to do the delivery date, um, and this is a bit sneaky, but you say you have, um, you have family issues that come up. Gosh, <laughs> so, no. Well, I, I, I mean that, I, it just, it gets a good review. Yeah, but have you ever heard of karma? Fine. So maybe don't do that. But the thing that, the two things that have worked the most are saying that I'm working on your piece to give you extra value and to make sure I spend extra time on your work. Um, whether that's true or not, you know, this is kind of semi-black hat. Maybe Shimmy doesn't agree. Maybe this channel is a lot more good guys. But, um, and, and then the other one is saying, you know, you know, I, I was sick or I have family issues and I'm getting to your article. Okay. So, if you can give any advice, let's end this because so far it's been really, really good, really informative. If you can give any advice, let's say you've got 20 seconds, 30 seconds to give some advice to someone at any age looking to start Fiverr, how could they go about it and try and stand out from the crowd? And okay. be, how can they get their, their job, their gig seen and clicked? And okay. What advice would you give? Find out what you're really good at. First of all, whether it's painting, drawing, math, science, social life, dancing, anything, literally anything, there's something on Fiverr for you. Um, go browse through Fiverr as a buyer and look at the top sellers to get inspiration. What I did when I created my first gig was I just copied and pasted all of the top writing gigs nice. and I just rewrote them for myself. So literally you're copying. Um, so gather all that and then the scariest thing to do and the thing that is most important to do is to post a Fiverr gig, okay? It takes maybe 30 minutes to an hour to actually post a gig. I'm um, being serious, it's not like, oh, When you... it says post gig, it means um, basically put a gig on the website so people can as, find it. As you. a seller, so you log in as a seller, you make sure you have a seller's account, um, and if you don't, create one and sign up, and then uh, actually create the gig. It, it takes time because you have to go through everything. You have to write the description, you have to do the pricing, do it like I said, um, you have to ask for the deliverables, you know, what are you going to deliver? You have to maybe make a video or at least have some pictures. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do. So just get it going and and just copy the best out there. And that will be the, the start. And you'll notice 
gigs will come in. The good thing about Fiverr is that they display newest sellers on the top as well. Because you can smart. you can sort by newest sellers. Not necessarily newest sellers, but newest gigs or newest sellers? Newest gigs, newest gigs, newest right. gigs and newest sellers. They do both. Nice, because you're not a new seller, you've been selling for a while. I've been selling for a while, so they do new gigs. So actually that's another tip. If you if your gig is not is you're not doing well, just relaunch it, do another gig. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah. Alright, amazing. So that is pretty much all the information you could possibly ever need on Fiverr from someone who is doing it and earning a lot of money as a side hustle as well, because this is far from main income. Yeah, so if, <laughs> definitely not. If this is something that really interests you doing Fiverr and you have more questions about it, let me know in the comments down below or send me an email, or DM me on Instagram or something. I can also put you in contact with Josh or you could check out his channel. What's my channel? I have no idea. Loving Growth. Oh. A bit of a weird channel. Loving growth. It's you don't want to like his channel, so it's fine. Aye. I'll, I'll still put a link to his description. Aye. That is not how you dig someone up. Big someone up. Big someone up. You're gonna absolutely love his channel. <laughs> I also do some Amazon videos. The last four or five videos have been Amazon related. Yeah, because we're I the ones a, that sell on Amazon together. I do. So anyway, shh, right. keyword strategy. Video. So I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description for anyone that does watch. If they want to go and check it out. And, uh, and yeah, so if you want to see more Fiverr stuff or anything like that, let me know in the comments and hopefully I'll see you in tomorrow's video. But just tell me also, if you like this kind of interview and I could do other interviews with either Josh or other people about other topics like Amazon, print on demand, Fiverr, making money online. Josh has done a whole bunch of different stuff and there are tons of people out there who have also done other things that I would love to interview for this channel. So if you like these kind of interview videos, then let me know and I will try and make some more of them. So thanks for watching guys. Thank you.